On the subject of giving and receiving, on the subject of how in the heck do we get where God's taking us, I give us a Christmas theme, receiving gifts. Funny you should pray that, man. praying for giving of gifts and stuff, and so that's what we're talking about. I'm going to hit that button. Um, I need a volunteer. What? Oh, okay. I need a volunteer. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, Wayne, you're close. A little closer. Okay, Wayne, I want to give you a gift. What are you going to do? Say no. Okay, next <laughs> one <there. laughs> no, I have to get it back. This is that kind of gift. I'm going to give you a gift. Thank you so much. <laughs> He's going to give you chili back. <laughs> yeah, no, I need chili. Okay, okay let's try it again okay. this time. Say thank you, but don't actually grab it. I'm going to give you a gift. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to give you a gift. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you a gift. Thank you again, Matt. Right, so that one doesn't work. Okay, one more. Uh, I'm going to give you a gift. When am I going to get it? <laughs> I am going to give you a gift. Okay, let's see it. The gift really actually is coming. Cross my arms. And land. Would it matter? Perhaps. Oh. <laughs> Do you trust me that I'll give you the gift? Um, okay. <laughs> How long are you willing to wait? Depends what it is. It's coming. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. And blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance that's imperishable and defiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for his salvation, ready to be revealed in the last how much has God given us just in that one passage? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's the salvation. Yeah. 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 work of living hope, Thank resurrection, <laughs> no. inheritance. Uh, born, born again. Protection. Uh, an inheritance, protection, power. He's given a lot of gifts here, isn't he? He's kind of... Mm -hmm. This is the original Santa Claus, for sure. Okay, so we're just going to hone in on this one phrasing of it, okay? Oh my gosh, I should never have said that word in this film. That was picked up on right away. This word caused, there's not really a direct English translation for it, but it's this idea of he made us be born again. So some translations will say he gave us to be born again. This one says he caused us to be born again. Either way, did we make ourselves get born again? No. No, okay, we, we definitely, God wanted to born, rebirth us, and he got it done. So, what we just covered was gift giving for dummies, right? Okay, if there's a gift available, and it's offered, 
you just you see it, right? You take it. That's 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 gifted. So he caused us to be born again, and John one says it this way. He came, Jesus came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Teaching the same thing as Peter just talked about there, right? What did the people have to do when Jesus was presented? Receive him. Receive him. And for all those who received him, they received the right to become children of God. And they were born, they were reborn uh, by God. Okay, and very clearly, obviously, Romans 3.23. For the wages of sin is death, but... Or 6.23. Oh my gosh, I didn't translate that right. I didn't do that. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So what God is giving us, it's not... It's not really even a thing that God gives us. He gives us the Son. Remember that whole lamb thing? We're on our way to meet with God. God gives us the gift of lamb. And then we present lamb to him, and that is sufficient. So God literally gave us Jesus. And Jesus is eternal life. And Jesus is the lamb. And God's grace is, giving, is given back to him. And, and we're right with God. But either way, it's a... Yeah. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the big principle we're gonna we're gonna start with here today. God has, we do not, we receive it from him. Okay. Gotta go a couple places with this today. But 1 Corinthians 4 is amazing. He's looking at this group of Christians, and they're starting to get kind of boastful. But what he says is, who regards you as superior? What do you have that you did not receive? <laughs> and if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Okay, let's just read that underlying part again. What do you have that you did not receive? Nothing. There's nothing that we currently have that we did not receive. Dion! Come on in, man. Are you serious? If he walks out of here right now, I'm going to attack. Dion! He will be quiet. I know. He's going to try to see him. He's chilly. Both. <laughs> what did he leave? No, just me. Hey, hey. Oh, please, no, I don't want to try. Can you see each other? Oh, man. It's not. Hey. Oh, it's raining from church. In I swear. <laughs> I 
this. <laughs> you planned ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a good principle to discuss. Okay. Uh, is giving a gift, you hand it, and another person has to receive it, and then you've got it. That's, that's giving one on one, right? Basic stuff. So then we get this idea of what do you have that you did not what do you have that you did not receive? And if we're honest about it, we don't have anything that we didn't receive. But we got everything given to us. Uh, so what, what ends up happening is, when we think about what salvation was, God gave us the free gift, we received the Lamb, we trusted Him for salvation. But there's this big key. Gift giving and gift receiving is humbling, especially for the person who receives the gift. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In fact, we were at a hockey game for Kyle the other day, and his buddy, who will be unnamed, we were like, you just need water? We'll go buy water. And he's holding his money in his hand, and he's like, uh, I'm going to pay for it. And we're like, it's just a bottle of water. We'll pay for it. It's okay. We're just going to go grab it. Okay. He's like, take my money. And he's making a really big dramatic deal out of this, like, I'm going to pay for this water. Like, I don't know what a water bottle costs at the rink. Like a dollar, dollar fifty, and he was just so intent on he was not going to let us give him a bottle of water because <laughs> he was going to pay for it. So I called him out. I said, "It's humbling, isn't it, when someone gives you something?" And he's like, "Yeah, normally I'm the one who gives it." Like, yeah, that's great. Now you get to take a bottle. I promise I didn't plan this whole gift giving talk. <laughs> Dion said he'd be here at 1230. It's not 1230. We're going to be all done. It's the Christmas season. I triple promise. Anyway, I'm just saying that. So the humbling thing. Okay, so with salvation, when God offers the gift of the Lamb to us, Jesus Christ, we know that we've received the Lamb when we feel humble. When we feel humble, that's when we know that there's a real gift exchange going on. You know, and we're going to have that next Monday morning. When I surprise my wife, she's going to go, Oh, I feel so, I just feel so loved and humble. Okay, it's going to happen. It's really going to happen. Okay? Sherry, let us know what you get. It's going to be awesome. I got a couple. A new one. No. But when Thomas gives his gifts, his friends going to be, Okay, so that's when we know that gift exchanges really happen. And so here's the deal. Receiving is the primary position we have with God. And we've got to grab this one and wrap it right in our heart. Like the primary position that we have with God is receiving. Because what do we really have? We can't give him any. We can't take we can't do anything for ourselves that he cannot already have kind of arranged and provided. Like, what do we have that we have not received? Like, receiving from God is the primary position. We see it with salvation. We're trying to approach God. We're trying to work our way there. We're trying to do good things. But what he does is he gives us the lamb. He gives us the lamb. And then the lamb is slain for our, us on our behalf. And then we give him back the lamb, the blood of the lamb, and he receives it. He gave us what he needed to get back from us. We have nothing in our relationship with God that he doesn't already have. So receiving from God is the primary position that we have with God, and that never changes. Never changes. Like God is still offering free gifts. Check out this one. Every good and perfect, every good and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. Like he's still in this deal of giving gifts. Okay, and then this one. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. <laughs> Everything God can do is in Christ Jesus and it's available through Christ Jesus. This one's the big one. We're going to hinge on this one. His divine power has granted, given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who calls to His own glory and excellence. I love this one because sometimes we think that God only does intangible things. He made me feel happy. Okay, that's good. But that one says what? He has granted to us all things that pertain to life. life and those intangible things of godliness. He's still giving free gifts. 
in the fullness of his son, God has a ready supply of everything pertaining to life and godliness. So what do we do? Is it ask and receive? Is it still ask and receive? Is it still ask and receive in everything that pertains to life and godliness? <laughs> Is it still ask and receive? So, but here's the problem, my friends. We're smart adults. I'm not going to claim to be a dumb adult. Okay. But this is the problem. We're smart adults. We know the way the world really works. Don't we? Matt, the world, I know that God does these nice... I'm talking about us who followed God a long time. Oh, I know that life is filled with uh, lots of things God does for us, but we got to do our part too. We got to do our part too. And if we're not careful, we start turning our part into over into his part. Because there is an our part and his part. Check this out. This is, my, this is my favorite thing from when God's blessing the Israelites with the land, the promised land. I'm going to give you a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. Okay, so God's actually proud of himself. He's going to give them bread and iron and copper. Where do you get copper? In whose hills you can dig. How do you get copper? You gotta mine it. Yeah, you gotta mine it. <laughs> Check it out, look at all that copper God gave them. So there is copper in there. But what do they gotta do to get it? Work for it. They gotta do some work for their copper. <laughs> so he gave them the gift of copper. So admittedly, I agree, adults, I'm talking to smart adults right now. You're right. Some gifts have a wrap. It's just copper had a wrapper of a mountain around it. But if you want copper, you can look at it. But the problem is we turn that realization into the fact that there are exceptions to the rule that God still gives and we still receive. Do you see what I mean? We do that in our heads and our hearts. We start turning this thing into, I've got to do my part. And that's not God giving anymore. It's me doing my part. See what's going on in our heads and our hearts there? What do we have that we have not received? So right now, do we believe that God has a perfect gift right now? I'm talking to everyone in this room, I'm talking to me right now. Something that you can really use. Is there something that God could just, if he could just show up and give one gift this holiday season? Something you could really use. It could be within or like related, like something out of the mind, the heart, money, family. Something in our bodies, and our souls, and our spirits. This is the question. Do we believe that God has a perfect gift available? Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. He's still a gift-giving God. I'm asking our hearts right now. Do we believe that that thing that we can sure use right now, can God provide that's the question. Because when it gets, especially when it gets tighter to ourselves, especially Lou, health, Dion, health, especially when it gets into like the really tangibles, man, if God doesn't show up, how's it going to work out? I agree. Sometimes it just makes you want to turn the lights out, Ellen, and just go to sleep. <laughs> So that's the question, that's the question. We're going to get this to our hearts right now. Do I believe, do we believe, do you believe that God has a perfect gift for you right now? And here's the deal. Remember salvation? How does that work? It works by grace through faith. So God is giving a gift in salvation. And we believe that he's going to provide it. And we receive it from him. So he's graciously giving it. And we are faithfully receiving it. That's how it works with God for salvation. Do we believe that every other gift comes the same way? God gives it. We believe. And we receive it. It's every gift from God that same way. If our own salvation and rebirth in Christ was by grace through faith, how will every other gift come? 
God transformed our inner nature through faith in Jesus Christ so that we had a new nature. But he's going to make every other gift come some other way. No. No, 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 no. No. God's grace is complete. His methods are simple. Oh, that's a terrible spelling of the word feeling. Okay? Okay? Just imagine you're a tree, okay? Felling the small. Humble and weak. Uh, are good signs for receiving. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Feeling small. Humble and weak are good signs that we're in the receptive mode. <laughs> okay, do we believe that receiving something spiritually can help our personal needs? What do we have that we've not received? But what does that mean? Okay, so God's all, he's all clouds and air and invisible. He can't really help with this really tangible cancer. Is that where our faith is? Is that what we believe about God? hope not. <laughs> because out of nothing, Hebrews 11, the universe was made. God is intangible. He's spirit. But out of his reality, he made what we think is so... So when it comes to the tangibles, does anyone... Don't raise your hand. A little money issue. Anyone? Can God really take care of money issues? He's just a big cloud in the sky. <coughs> That's the question. But feeling small, humble, and weak are good signs that we're on our way to receiving. Okay, but here's God's only rule on giving. You remember when Wayne was up here? Okay, I put the gift here. And I said, uh, Wayne, I'm going to give you a gift. And it turned into this kind of stare down. <laughs> The tension was growing. When is he going to give the gift? And then rudely, Wayne left and sat down. <laughs> On your insistence. It was a suggestion. You follow through of your own will. And at the moment of leaving, suddenly that was when the gift was going to be given. Okay, here's the deal. What is faith? Faith is do you trust me? The gift giver, generous gift giver, says, I am going to give you a gift. That's a promise. But because there's a time delay, it starts testing the faith of the receiver. And sometimes God lets that time gap exist. Actually, a lot of times. God lets that time gap it comes in at the last minute. <laughs> but I, I know you guys' story and you know mine. Can we say that God's come through? Yeah. The waiting period has always worked out. And we actually tend to love Him for it. Because if God starts turning into an ATM, please, thank you, please, thank you, please, thank you, please, just thanks, just give it air. They return into these happy with rabbits. Sometimes God builds a relationship with us. What are we going to do while we wait? Am I only here for the gift? Because you can kind of hang out with the guy while you're waiting. <laughs> you can build a relationship with God while you're waiting. And now it's not about the gift anymore, which is what you prayed. Now it's not about the gift. You're still waiting. You still need the gift. But you're waiting with somebody, someone you love very much, someone who loves you very much. It builds the trust, it builds the bond. And then when the gift is given, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I didn't need that. Can we wait for his salvation? Can we wait for his deliverance in our mind, heart, body, family, money, church? Can we ask and receive by waiting for it? Or do we reach for the gift, but give up early because we lose it? I think that's the beauty of the Christmas uh, image, is we wrap our presents and stick them under the tree, and you're not allowed to open them. It's like a total perfect picture of what we're talking about here. You gotta wait. 
God has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead in order to obtain an inheritance that's imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who through the power of God are being protected by faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the last steps. Do we have the spiritual faith to wait on the spiritual answer that will affect our natural need? This is the test. This is the quiz. Put your box. Yes or no? Do we have the spiritual faith to wait on the spiritual answer that will affect our natural need? You might have to ask and receive faith first. Isn't that interesting? God, I need the gift of faith <laughs> to wait. Will he give? Man, faith is the key to all this stuff. Here's a fact. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. It's a fact. builds trust. So, my friends, let's sit with God a little bit on this one. God, we just open up our minds and our hearts on this one. This one cut pretty close to our hearts today on this whole idea of waiting especially and uh, trusting that you can provide a need that is needed. God, there's... Ugh, think of everything that I've got going on. I think of everything that I know of in this room and all the things I don't know in this room. But there's a lot that we need you to do. And, you know, I can think of all the things you've already done this year, and I say, hooray. But that list is still there. There's still other things, Lord. We still need you to show up and do stuff. We still need you to show up and do stuff. I think, God, that whole idea of waiting with you, though, it just rests in my mind as a huge key in this. Can I wait with God while the gift is being given? Do I have the desire to be with him in, in such a measure that I really just kind of want to be with him? And that the gift is, is important, but it was just great to sit with God while the gift was being prepared. And I think about how I met Sherry, that she's been such a gift now these many years, but I waited a long time for her. The, the better ones do take the longest time, don't they? So right now, everybody here, just put that thing in your mind. Put that thing in your mind. What's that thing that popped in your mind when I said, what do you need right now? Mind, body, uh, soul, spirit, money, the real things. Put that thing in your mind, and can you ask God for it right now? You don't have to do it out loud, just do it in your mind. He hears. Just say, God, this is what I need. I need you to do this. And just name it. And the Father of lights who never changes and gives every good and perfect gift, He hears. And He's going to give. Do you trust Him? Same thing with our salvation. We saw our need. We felt a lack. We saw that we weren't right with you and that it was causing trouble. But then we heard about Jesus and the free gift of eternal life by faith in him. And we said to ourselves, maybe, just maybe, there's something there that can help my need. We opened up our hearts to believe that maybe in Jesus our need could be filled our need for love, need for forgiveness. And you brought it. And then we were humble and you gave us that rush of joy and peace of salvation in Jesus Christ. And that same gift-giving mechanism is how every gift happens thereafter. God, we see our need. We go to you for it. Maybe, just maybe, you're the one who can provide it. We trust you. Okay. We've all done that this morning, and we have made some progress today.
So God, we just want to honor you as we wrap up. We want to honor you together and say you are the great gift giver. Nobody gives gifts like God does. God, if, 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 if we were organizing this thing, we would get more uh, comforts and more relationships on the earth, and that's good. You've made all those comforts. you made all the relationships. But what you decided to give was Jesus. He's not just a man. The greatest gift you could give was your own son. God, I pray that we still have the faith to receive Jesus Christ. Even today. Even in our own church. Lord, what our church needs is Jesus. What our families need is Jesus. We have the faith to receive you, Lord. I pray it so. Give us the faith. <laughs> Can you pray that with me in your heart and mouth? Give me the faith. Give me the faith. So thank you, God, this Christmas season for gift giving and gift receiving. And we sure appreciate you very much. I'm just going to bless the food. Lord, thanks for food. And we enjoy eating it together. In your name, God. Amen. Amen. All right. <coughs> gift give. With joy this morning. Hey, before we close, we back. We are we for back. Some we back. Oh, sure. I'm I'm we're trying to quit smoking today. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Today's the day. Okay. Yeah. How do you want to do? You want me to make a plan? Well, anybody that feels comfortable. We just wanted to involve the church in this because it's just a struggle we go through right now. The last year I've been, um, a year ago I, uh, I started smoking again in a stressful time. And uh, it was just on and off, on and off. Every week I started, stopped, started, stopped. So it's actually a 